Let's talk about Steve Martin and his latest movie. In the 1970s, Steve Martin burst upon the entertainment scene and quickly established himself as one of America's top stand-up comics. Because I am a wild and crazy guy! I felt like I was acting dumb so that others might laugh. I was doing the dumb things that everyone wanted to do. They wanted to get up and jump up and down. They wanted to, to put arrows on their heads. They wanted to do something dumb that had no responsibility to anyone. In concert, Martin has drawn record crowds. He's played twice in Lincoln, Nebraska. Two of his comedy albums won platinum, three others gold, two won Grammys. Seven million sold altogether, and his book, Cruel Shoes, was number one on the New York Times bestseller list. His appearances on TV Saturday Night Live are now television classics. But stand-up comedy, acting dumb, was not enough for a man of Martin's diverse talents. It's uh, emotionally straining. It's traveling all the time. You've got the dread of the show over here every night and the audiences got rough and uh, I wanted to make movies. After receiving an Oscar nomination for his short subject film The Absent-Minded Waiter, Martin teamed up with veteran comedy writer Carl Reiner with whom he wrote his showcase film The Jerk which Reiner directed. And now Steve Martin has a brand new movie called Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid starring none other than that wild and crazy guy himself Carl Reiner plays a small part in the film, and he also directed it. Come on, Marlo, no games. I never could fool you, could I? At first glance, you might recognize this as a classic That's scene from the 1946 movie, The Big Sleep. Sure, yeah, but take a closer look. Is it possible for Steve Martin to be co-starring with Humphrey Bogart? I'm just beginning to realize it's better to have something to look forward to. In fact, that's exactly what it is, and it's a Hollywood first. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid ingeniously utilizes scenes from 18 classic films of the 40s, all throughout the picture, enabling Martin to interact with some of Hollywood's great legends. Before the script could be written, however, director Carl Reiner screened over 300 movies to select the scenes. Mainly, we were looking to see each scene has one or two things, either to help the story or to get a laugh. And you needed to have an actor by himself or over the shoulder, so you couldn't really identify who the actor in the foreground was. And then the, we, they had to have lines that were juicy with, uh, with import. No hugs, no kisses. We used to flop into each other's arms, Doris. Well, don't you think we really ought to get to know each other all over again? One element critical to creating the illusion was the substitution of ghost actors dressed in the original costumes and hairstyles. They actually stood in for the stars. Can you recognize her? Remember Veronica Lake? Who's that? Fred McMurray. Who's this? Lana Turner. And James Cagney. Perhaps the real stars of Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid were the technicians who painstakingly matched the lighting and the set designs from the classic films to bring the 40s back to life. And that devotion and time produced one of the most unusual team efforts in film history. Motion picture is a collaborative effort. You hear it all the time. But this was the most that we've ever... We had to collaborate with people who were dead. Remember, cameras and lighting have certainly improved since the films of the 1940s. How on earth could they make a new film look old? Films of the 40s had an unmistakable look about them that has long since disappeared. In Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, technicians were faced with matching exactly both the look and the style of the 18 vintage film clips utilized throughout the picture. Director of photography, Michael Chapman, explained. What we did was try and make a movie as if we were making it in the 40s. We even had old lights. We did things like not use a zoom lens at all. So if you don't use a zoom lens and you want to push in on something, you've got to do what they do, which is put the camera on a crane and make a move that we now would do with a the zoom. There's some cookies on the table. Have one. Good, aren't they? The pattern of lighting for each scene obviously had to be determined by the pattern of lighting in that old movie. I mean, some cameramen obviously in the 40s were better than others, just like now. So sometimes I would actually have to match rather bad lighting, and sometimes very good. Now, in many instances, the original technicians who had made the old films were hired, such as the elaborate special effects men who created these fireworks to match these scenes which were filmed in the A lot of Dead Men is a kind of archaeology, and we happened to find the real guys who had actually done it and brought them back and had them redo the same pinwheels and the same sky rockets and whatever they were. 
with a lot of money and a lot of equipment at your disposal in order to make something look as tacky as some of those movies, in fact, were, is rather difficult. I hope we did it. I think you did it very, very well. Dead Men Don't Wear a Plaid must have been an editing and a lighting nightmare. But they pulled it off. It's zany. It's off the wall. It's typical Steve Martin. And if you don't like him, well, excuse me. We'll be back with more next time. <laughs>